In this video, we'll take a look at the URL variable in Google Tag Manager, what it is and why is it so useful. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics the right way. On some websites where you want to implement your web tracking, the URL or the web address might contain some useful information. For example, when a visitor makes a purchase and lands on a thank you page, that thank you page's URL might contain data like order ID or order total. And it would be cool to send that data from the URL to third-party tools like Google Ads or Google Analytics or whatever. And that's where URL variable becomes very handy because you can use that variable to take certain parts of the URL and reuse that in your tags. So let's take a look how can we do that. Here I am on a thank you page of my demo website and we can tell that also from the URL of the page because we have pages slash order successful and then question mark and we have two parameters. One is order ID and the other one is order total. So what we could do in this case is that we could fire a Google Ads conversion tag on the URL where the page URL contains order successful but also with that tag we could also send the value of order ID which in this case is one, two, three, four, five. And also we could send the order total, which is 1299. In this context, these two parameters, I mean, order ID and order total, they are called query parameters. And we know that because they come in the URL after the question mark. And if the URL contains multiple query parameters, they are connected with the ampersand. So the first thing that we should do is that we need to create two variables that will return the values of these query parameters. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Variables, and then we need to go to User Defined Variables and click New. Variable Configuration, and then choose URL. URL variable can return the full URL or certain parts of the URL. And in this case, we need to set the component type Query, because Query means that we are interested in a certain query parameter. And now we need to enter the Query key. In this case, Query key is the name of the parameter. So in our case, that is order underscore ID. And let's name the variable. Hit save. And then let's do the same thing for the order total. We go to variables, click new, variable configuration, then URL, then choose once again query parameter and enter order total and save it. Now let's test whether our variables are configured correctly. So we need to refresh the preview mode or if you haven't enabled it yet, you need to click the preview button, then refresh that thank you page with the URL parameters and you can click on continue loaded variables and let's check what we have here. And you will see that both variables return the actual values of these query parameters. So that's a good thing. Now, the next thing what we could do is that we could fire a Google Ads conversion tag on this page. In order to do that, first, we need to create a conversion in Google Ads interface. So you need to log into your Google Ads account. And then once you do that, go to Tools and Settings, Measurement and Conversions. Then you will need to create a new conversion. Here I have several demo conversions, but let's create a new one. Click Conversion, then click Website. Then you need to choose the category. So in this case, we are tracking purchase and let's name this conversion. Then we need to send the value. In this case, we will be sending it dynamically because we will be parsing the URL. And if, for example, the order total is 599, then we will send that value to Google Ads. That's why we need to choose use different values for each conversion. Then we need to send the default value. So in this case, that's fine to keep it as one euro. If you have set a different currency, you will see probably dollars or something else. Then we need to choose how many conversions do we count per click or interaction. So in case of purchase, we should track every conversion and click create and continue. Now we're being asked about how are we going to track this conversion. And in our case, we're using Google Tag Manager. And now we get two parameters that we will need to use in our Google Ads tag within Google Tag Manager. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, Tags. Click New, Tag Configuration, then Google Ads Conversion Tracking, 
and then in the conversion ID field, you need to enter this part. And in the conversion label, you need to copy this and paste it right here. And then we have two fields that we can fill in with our URL variable. The first one is conversion value. So that is order total. We can insert the variable by clicking this button and enter order total. And in the order ID field, we can enter order ID variable. Then in the triggering, we need to configure when do we want to fire our Google Ads conversion tab. And in this case, we want to fire it when the URL contains slash pages slash order successful. So copy that part of the URL. Of course, in your case, that might be different. Maybe you have some data alert push or something else. But in my case, that is a page view. So click triggering, then we need to create a new trigger. Click plus icon right here. And in trigger configuration, you need to choose page view, some page views, and page URL contains this part. Then let's name the trigger click save. And that is pretty much it. Also, if you haven't connected your Google ads to your Google Analytics, you should also create a conversion linker tag. I'll post a link to a guide about conversion linker below this video. And finally, let's name the tag. Also, let's go back to Google ads and then click next. And that way we have completed our conversion. I mean, we completed the creation of conversion. And now the time has come to test the implementation. So let's go to a thank you page. To properly test this, I would recommend using a Google Chrome extension, which is called Tag Assistant. And once you install it, you will see an icon right here, which is blue. So once I am on a thank you page, first I need to click on that icon, then click Enable. And then I will need to refresh the page once again. But before that, make sure that you have refresh the preview and debug mode. Because once you do that, the latest version of your container will be previewed on your website. So click refresh. And then once you have enabled the tag assistant, you need to reload the thank you page with URL parameters in the URL. And in this case, what we see is that on container loaded, our tag has fired. And if we click tag assistant, you will see that Google ads conversion tracking tag is marked as green. You can click it. You can then click on URLs, switch to a table mode. And here you will see parameters like order ID, which is OID and value, which is this one. So this means that this parameter was sent to Google ads. Even if you do that, you will still see your conversion as unverified because in order to do that, you need to actually click on your ad, let's say in Google search, then convert. And only after a while, this tag will be marked as verified. It is not enough just to fire a tag. You need to actually go through the entire process from clicking the ad and converting. Don't limit yourself by using URL variable just in Google ads tags. You can use them in any tags you want within Google Tag Manager. And in fact, you can access not only query parameters, but also other parts of the URL as well. So you can click on variables, click new, variable configuration, URL. By default, this variable is using the page URL as an input. But if, for example, you want to extract the query parameter from some other URL, let's say from the click URL, you can go to more settings and choose another source. Instead of page view, you could use, let's say, click URL and then you can get a query parameter from that click URL if you wish. And that's how you use URL variable in Google Tag Manager. Other examples of URL parameters that are useful to track are UTM parameters. Maybe let's say search term is in the URL and you want to take that. Everything is up to your imagination. If you found this video useful and you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Also, I would really appreciate if you hit the like button because it helps my channel to grow. My name is Julius and I will see you in the next video.